Welcome back to this last uh, Alt-C session. So it's great to be here. My name is Emma Proctor-Legg and I'm the chair for this session. And I'm really pleased to be joined today by Tim. And he's talking on a topic that I'm really interested to hear all about. So the session title is Cameras On or Off? Different Perspectives of the Same Live Lesson Experience in FE During the COVID-19 Emergency. So the session is 25 minutes in total with approximately 20 minutes for the presentation and five minutes for questions. Please do use the chat to post questions and comments, and I will now hand you over to Tim. Okay, well, thanks, Emma. And uh, well, good afternoon, and thank you for attending uh, this uh, presentation on the cameras on or off dilemma. And this is something that's uh, stimulated a lot of debate in virtual staff rooms and on social media during uh, the emergency. And about uh, an hour ago, the topic was covered by Kat uh, Gazella and Pete Miller from the University of Sheffield. Um, and they asked the pertinent question, should we see students' cameras when we teach online synchronous sessions? And it's a good question because normally uh, teachers have been used to seeing the eager faces of their students peering at them and expectations, uh, expectation during lessons. Uh, but during the past 18 months, uh, that experience has, uh, has changed fundamentally. Um, so I'm going to have a little bit of a practice with you, uh, uh, sorry, not you, Wu Clap. Um, and uh, there is a uh, QR code there and there's a link uh, to uh, wuclap.com alt c 2021. And the question is, why don't students turn their cameras on during synch uh, synchronous online lessons? Uh, and if you can keep your responses uh, fairly short, uh, you know, one one word answers would be great. Uh, and we'll have a look at that later to see uh, what uh, um, people think about that. Okay, so what I plan to do is uh, talk about the research I've been undertaking at Plumpton College and at uh, the uh, two other colleges that were part of our consortium. Um, and uh, discuss uh, the change, changed teacher-student dynamic we experienced during the emergency, take a look at the findings of the research and make some recommendations. So uh, last year I was employed by Plumpton College to investigate what was happening in online lessons. They'd noticed that uh, student experience was too variable and had formed a college collaboration fund partnership with Basingstoke, uh, uh, Basingstoke College and with East Kent, um, that's Basingstoke Technical College, and uh, with East Kent uh, College Group. And um, the aim was to find out how to improve digital confidence and competence of our lecturers and the learning experience of our students. Um, so at Plumpton, uh, we teach a range of land-based topics from uh, wine production, uh, equine science, uh, veterinary nursing, blacksmithing, forestry, animal management. And our partnership uh, colleges uh, teach all, all the courses you'd expect at a general FE and tertiary college. Um, teachers had used online uh, learning methods previously, mainly using Moodle or Google Classrooms, but only as support for physical face-to-face -face settings. Uh, they had not taught online uh, in synchronous lessons. And uh, as we know, research in this field is uh, predominantly focused on situations where students and teachers have elected to join uh, an online course and not much where uh, online learning is mandatory. So I, I initiated a, oh, let's go back a bit, there we go. Uh, I initiated a mixed method uh, research program uh, last December. And this involved a rapid literature review, an initial set of benchmarking surveys with staff and students, plus uh, follow-up surveys uh, in March. There were 21 interviews with staff, uh, teaching staff, three uh, focus groups uh, with a total of 12 students from each of the three colleges. And there were uh, two surveys, uh, one at the start and one at the end uh, of the uh, project, uh, 250 members of staff who taught online, over 1,400 students responded to the first survey, over 160 online teachers and over 1,000 students to uh, the second. 
And the demographics of respondents to both student surveys were fairly similar, with around 80% of them studying at levels two or three and 70% in year one. Um, so, yes, I kind of started out uh, with my first research interview uh, with a lecturer. And uh, I was a little bit surprised uh, by uh, the uh, level of irritation and annoyance I heard uh, in that. Um, so this is a, a quote from, from that, uh, that interview. Students won't turn their cameras on. I suspect that a lot of students just turn the camera off and use it as an excuse to duck. And uh, other student lecturers I spoke with agreed that non-use of cameras was uh, a real problem for them, being able to judge uh, student attention. So here's a quote here. I don't know if someone is being quiet because they're anxious. I don't know if someone's being quiet because they're just studious and they're making notes. I don't know if they're being quiet because they're not there or because they're intimidated by the content. I just can't judge that. There's no way of judging that because they won't put their cameras on. And I just, uh, I don't want to go give you too many quotes here, but there's one more. Uh, we've all been uh, trying to get people to turn their cameras on and microphones on to give them a better experience, but it's just not been possible for us. Lecturers I talk to say they feel like they're teaching, just teaching to a brick wall. So this is a, a big disconnect between staff, staff expectations and student behaviour. Our lecturers continue to focus on maintaining the quality of their teaching as they adapted to teaching in this new environment. The means of communication profoundly affected their practice, especially with regard to their interaction with students. Staff were used to physical classroom where they were in control of what we might call the gaze, where uh, they're in a position at the front of the class, allowing them to monitor all their students, as uh, shown in this figure taken from Masia, uh, conventional Teaching typically consists of teacher A instructing students B, C, D, etc. And this setting enables teachers to see all their students, identify visual cues that broadly demonstrate a level of comprehension and allows them to adjust their teaching based on these cues. Moving online, change this dynamic and place staff and students in a new environment at, uh, uh, with a new dynamic where staff and uh, students have the potential to have the same view of each other. Uh, the image on the right is taken from uh, a meeting in together mode in Microsoft Teams, uh, and the figure is taken from Moore's paper on his theory of transactional distance, and shows the potential for interaction between participants in the distance learning environment. And I'll come back to Moore's theory a little later. Um, the technology appeared to provide an environment that was like a physical classroom, but treating it as such wasn't working for teachers. Uh, for those who had seen the Microsoft uh, marketing and promotion, this is what they may have expected to see, but what they got was more like this. And the challenge involved in moving face-to-face uh, -face lessons to online had the unintended effect of impeding many of the opportunities teachers normally use to understand their, their students and adjust their teaching and tended to shift the main focus for many of them towards simply delivering lessons. Staff were, it seems, were trying to replicate their usual practice in this new environment, but students weren't responding in kind. As a student in a physical classroom, you really have no control over how you're seen. But in the online environment, students recognize that they could take control of how and when they were seen and use this particular technological affordance to manage their visibility. So why did they do that? Um, so shall we have a look and see what you think? If hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, people have responded to my WooClap, let's have a look. That's loading up. Oh, look at that, whoa, that's amazing. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, privacy is a big one there, obviously that jumps out. Anxiety, privacy concerns, yeah, chaotic home light, the life, it's tiring to be seen, ha health and anxiety, caring for children, broadband issues. So there's the kind of a technical side, there's a social side there, personal, not being dressed, eating a messy burrito. Yeah, yeah. Afraid of screen bombing as well. I think that's a that's another one where, you know, you're, you're very exposed in this environment. Someone can take a screenshot of you uh, in an embarrassing uh, position and then uh, share that and, 
there's opportunities there for, for bullying uh, beyond uh, what's normally available to uh, some students. Um, it's tiring to be seen on screen. And I feel this as well. I think there's an opportunity there for uh, the uh, tech companies to address this issue, to think about, um, you know, if they want to try and replicate the environment, you know, when you're when you're uh, in a classroom, you don't normally see yourself. And that makes you feel, I think, I think very self-conscious. So thank you for sharing that. That's that's really great. Thank you for sharing your, your thoughts on that. And I'm going to move on because I know we're, we're short of time here. Uh, so if you look at the interviews, what, what did they, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, what did they, um, what were the reasons that uh, the uh, lecturers and students uh, gave? Well, uh, some of them uh, were based on personal concerns as came up in that uh, word cloud. And one lecturer I spoke to uh, brought this home, uh, had this brought home to them very strongly. Uh, so I'll just read this quote. A student in my tutor group, the only student who had 100% attendance, messaged me in floods of tears that she's really struggling with anxiety to do with cameras and being online. But for the first time, her attendance dropped because she had to leave the session. So that's a very uh, big reaction, I think. And uh, I think that's, that teacher really took on board what the issue was, get, that was going on there. Some students I spoke to thought it was related to feeling of being continually observed. It's definitely those who have a bit of anxiety, maybe struggle a lot more online because they just can't turn the camera on because everyone's going to be able to look at them, look at you the entire time. So uh, we know that uh, anxiety and depression are more prevalent in college students than in the general population. Um, Ibrahim and Al estimated that around 30% of US college students have some form of depression. And a re recent study by Jenkins et al in the UK found uh, a similar proportion here. Uh, the UK Children's Commissioner report that 20% of children experience persistent stress during lockdown. So it really, it is, it is a big issue. And it's a, it, it is a con contributing factor to why students tended to turn off cameras, but does it tell the whole story? So some students reported they didn't have uh, computers that are up to the job of processing audio and video on the web. Uh, here's an example. I'd say the main issue for me is my computer is just very, very slow. It's a very cheap laptop. I just want to turn my microphone mic on or and off. I might have to wait up for up to 20 seconds for that to happen which is really, really awkward when I put my hand up and the teachers asked me to say something. And staff reported that uh, network or processing issues on the rare occasions that everyone shared their cameras. Uh, with Teams specifically, it can be a little uh, bit slow and laggy when you've got all the students on. So we've got a group size of 30 and it can be really, really slow if everyone's got cameras on and can't click on their class notebooks to do anything because it just freezes everything. OK, so so technical and social issues here. Uh, let's what did the surveys tell us? Um, so we asked uh, a number of questions in the survey and we, we're looking here at uh, this comparison between survey one and survey two. Very little difference here. Most students said they were confident in using online learning technologies. About 65 percent. Um, but only a quarter found online learning as interesting as face-to-face -face lessons. Significantly, around 60% agreed that technical issues disrupted online lessons. And around 15% said they did not have access to reliable network connection. So those last two may very well be connected for, for some students. Um, what about teachers? Well, uh, they were equally confident in their use of online learning technologies. But this changed uh, in the later survey, three months later. Confidence in the use of online learning technology improved from 66% to 75%, saying that they, they had confidence. Similarly, uh, we saw a, a change here with teachers reporting their ability to motivate students improving from 49% to 64%. And uh, there's a, also there's a big drop in the uh, teachers having uh, reporting uh, technical issues, disrupting their lessons from 64% to 42%. Uh, that's quite a, a difference between the teachers' experience here and the students. 
Um, and what can we attribute this to? Uh, so um, I think it comes in three letters, really, CPD. Um, speaking to some teaching staff at the end of the project, it seems that uh, they were responding positively to the intensive focus of CPD sessions in the February half term. So whereas students did not have the same experience and the students I spoke to complained about the lack of provision they had, there was some training provided, but it wasn't enough. So the picture that emerges is that uh, while it may have been uncomfortable for lecturers not to see most of their class, it, it, um, it may have been too much uh, for students faced with anxiety over being watched or watching themselves, a slow computer or an unreliable network connection. And the affordances of the interface, which allowed students for the first time to take control over their visibility in lessons. So what could be done uh, about this, uh, this issue? Uh, some lecturers I interviewed suggested the introduction of sanctions for not turning on cameras. Um, and uh, uh, I'm not sure how enforceable this would be, to be honest, and, and how you'd manage that, that manage those who had legitimate reasons for not complying. Uh, be interested to know if anyone actually agrees with this. Um, I spoke, uh, some of the lectures I spoke with had noticed that building rapport with students was important. So I'll just read this quote here. A lot of students, they wouldn't put their cameras on. But when you're talking to them, you're getting a rapport with them. They're answering or they're typing the answer in. They know what's happening. And that to me is the, is the key thing. Teachers recognized that uh, cameras were a bigger issue than they thought and began to de-emphasize their use. So I've got a, quite a long quote here, but I, I think it's worth uh, repeating here. Um, where we were pushing so much to get the cameras on, actually we were just bugging the students, making them more anxious about it. Then suddenly their microphones are off as well. Whereas what we found is that if we let the cameras go, I found, and most of my colleagues have found, that the engagement with the microphones and the chat massively went up. So what I'm doing is st instead is encouraging them to answer short quizzes or mini assessments through the, throughout the lessons and saying to them, this is how I'm going to do the register. So I see if, if you're answering these questions, I'll mark you as attending. If you're not, I'm not going to mark you as attending. And that worked for this, uh, this staff member. So although I'm happy with not seeing the faces of many students, many staff participants reported success with alternative approaches to assessing student attention and engagement. Uh, and other teachers and students talked about how they saw more camera use in breakout rooms as well. Um, so I, I promised a, a little talk here about Moore's uh, transactional distance uh, theory. Um, and this interaction is between the learner and instructor is at the core of uh, this theory. Uh, the big idea is that in distance education, transition, transactional distance is not just a matter of being geographically apart, but it's also a pedagogical phenomenon. He discusses what to consider when designing distance courses and focuses on teaching behaviours that are defined in his terms by dialogue and structure. The interplay of these two functions define the transaction distance between learner and teacher. The more dialogue, the less distance, which leads to better learning experience and positive learning outcomes. Rigid structure tends to reduce dialogue and teachers should aim to promote dialogue via a variety of means in the low structured environment. So with apologies to more, I'm going to do this. Um, despite criticism, the theory does provide, oh, I'll go back again, provide a useful framework on which to hang discussion on this topic. And what my research appears to indicate is that by relaxing structure a little, that is de-emphasizing camera use and increasing the variety of ways of engaging, encouraging dialogue, teachers reported increasing levels of interaction. Don't know how dialogic the interaction was or if it led to improved learning outcomes, but teachers noticed that increasing the variety of interactive methods improved their knowledge of what individual students were doing during lessons and enhanced their ability to differentiate and assess their progress. So just to uh, round up here, uh, I discovered that despite expressing confidence in using online learning technology, students had several social and technical barriers to overcome to adopt camera use. They either had anxiety, concerns over privacy, unreliable network connections, or low quality computing, or varying combinations of these influences. And they exploited the affordances of the technology to control their visibility. On the other hand, 
Teachers were concerned by the lack of visual cues to support their practice, but increasing confidence and decreasing levels of technical disruption to their classes and those who de-emphasised camera use and adopted alternative methods to assessing understanding and progress found that uh, the transactional distance decreased and students tended to encourage and engage more in lessons. I feel as I'm coming near the end here. Uh, I've got one couple more slides. Uh, so my key recommendations were to improve teaching practice, were to de-emphasise camera use, to reduce anxiety and privacy concerns, encourage and model social behaviours and record lessons to ensure that those students who experience technical interruptions would have opportunities to revisit lessons when disruptions have passed. So uh, I've got a little QR code there if, if anyone would like to give me some feedback. I'm always interested in that, what you thought of my presentation. It'd be interesting to see that. Uh, there's a, the full report is available on, on, by that link. And there's uh, uh, this is the, uh, the Department for Education report that, that I produced. Um, and then there's a bit, bit of information about me there, about my Twitter and so, so, such like. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Thank you, Tim. Um, a, a brilliant session. Really, really Thank fascinating. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have to say at the moment, there aren't any comments in, in the... Oh, no, there are oh. some. So um, people are surprised at the percentages, number with um, bad yeah. or band, that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, uh, it yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, and and sanctions for the for non use of camera, yeah, yeah. Um, which is a surprising suggestion. <clears throat> I feel it is, but it's uh, I, I've it's also I haven't included this here, but I, I had a look around Twitter, and uh, and uh, it's noticeable there that uh, this was mandated at the, a lot of colleges uh, were mandating the use of cameras. And, uh, you know, there's messages on there. Oh, don't forget to have your cameras on. And, uh, don't forget to sign, get your parents to sign the uh, consent forms and all this sort of thing. So, um, there, and, I, and I think, you know, I think teachers were really trying to really felt that lack. I mean, I, I, that was, it came home to me very strongly. I mean, I just, before I started this research in up until November, I was teaching online myself to, I had students in China who I was teaching, and some of them had the cameras on, some of them didn't. And you know, you'd just say, "Oh, you know, oh, I'd love to see your face," you know, yeah. and if you can, please do. And then we went into breakout rooms, and suddenly the cameras were on, and they were chatting amongst themselves. So uh, that was quite interesting. There's, there's, you know, there were obviously there were bandwidth issues in China, um, and uh, so. Yeah, so I was quite taken aback with it, how, how strongly that message came across. Um, and so I've spent a lot of time trying to f focus that and try to remind teachers that, you know, they know who their students are, they know their social backgrounds, and yeah. they know it's difficult for them, some of them. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question in from uh, Pete. He says, do staff warm to the idea of cameras off with awareness of accessibility issues? I think so. Uh, you know, I'm, I was only able to follow up with a, a handful of, of uh, lecturers at the end of the, the project. Um, but all of them I spoke to just said, it really works, you know, using uh, using quizzes, doing breakout rooms, uh, doing polling, just breaking up the club, breaking up the lesson uh, yeah. and delivering your, the, the, the stuff in a different way really worked. So, um, I think there'll always be staff who, who don't like that, and it is it can be disconcerting, you know. I mean, I, I yeah. But then again, you know, I mean, I mean, in this this environment, uh, if I had twenty minutes to deliver, I'll just deliver it, you know. And then we'll say, okay, guys, what do you what do you think? And you'll notice those people are responding. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, this yeah. this scenario really does kind of sum up that experience, doesn't it? Mm. Um, but we're getting those interactions from the comments. Um, I'm very aware of time. Sure. Um, it has been a really, really interesting session. There are a number of comments I think you'll want to have a look at in the um, comments area. And some of them are coming up on screen now. But I just want to take this moment just to say thank you again. And um, we're okay. out of time. Okay. I'm just going to put the link there. But, uh, okay.
Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was really good to do this. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you.